put our clothes out when it's zero degrees Fahrenheit outside and the sun's out. What do they do first when you put them out at zero degrees? They freeze, right? Those nice little sheets, you put them down and they go whoosh, and they went whoosh. But then they start to get a little bit. You're, you're, you're really lifelizing those things. They're just, there's the low, low humidity out there. You got the heat coming in from the reactor up in the sky. And you bring them in and they smell great. They're a little chilly, right? When you bring them in, they're still zero degrees, so, but they're not wet anymore. So you put them in the house and warm up and they're great. So choosing, how do we go about choosing materials and items? This is, again, another thing that you want to think about when you're talking about here. We have a lot of things to look at. We used a basic metric, was they looked at the life cycle cost environmentally and economically. We built the house for 100 years. Well, I'm not going to make it. I told the builders <laughs> and the other people that, I'm good maybe for 20, no more than 30 years from when we were doing this. I said, I don't want anything to break for 30 years, but I want you to build for 100 years. So we made these decisions on the life cycle for 100 years. What's the environmental impact of what we're doing? What's the economic cost? And if we could get it so that the environmental benefits were at least equal, that we did it. If Many times we could get environmental benefits much better than economics because that was no problem at all. Sometimes it was the other way around and you had to make a hard decision. Are you rich enough to afford this for the environmental reasons or the aesthetic value and so forth? And so we also considered aesthetic, ease of maintenance, durability, environmental importance and so forth. And so let's see if we can announce. I mean, I'll go back and say a little more about a couple of that. I think I have it somewhere in the slide. But anyway, so what, what am I talking about? That's a raised seam steel metal roof. That's expensive. That roof on that house cost $17,000. Now, environmentally, it's a good deal. First off, at least 75% of that is recycled steel. Secondly, when we finish with it, or somebody finishes with it, in a hundred or more years, you just melt it down and make another roof. We could have put on there an asphalt roof, $5,500, right? $12,000 difference, you know, am I stupid or something? But then you start to think about it, asphalt petroleum product. You know, we had a little bit in Iraq, you know, we had the military and the Navy spend billions of dollars to get this oil here and there. Then what do we do when we're finished? It's a 25-year roof, goes in the landfill. And then it's, it's, this roof should have virtually no maintenance. We don't have a tornado or some golf football or, uh, you know, baseball-sized hail come through and they can make a mess of anything. So it'll ruin my metal roof. I have insurance for that. But, so the asphalt roof, you're going to have problems with it. It's going to come off, fall apart, do other kinds of things. And what I'm, saying. I'm, I'm talking too much. But anyway, that's, that was the choice. And we did this on the hardy board siding. It's made, it never had to be painted. I'm lazy. Uh, it should last for 100 years. Insects don't eat it. Made out of uh, cement and fiber. It costs more than other things. But uh, so anyway. So what's the cost for this house? Everybody's saying, oh, expensive. No, it turns out that, that actually all these features, having no energy bill, cost nothing. You know? This is the price for the house, $126 per square foot. Now, we had a custom-made quality house, okay? If you build a custom-made quality house in Ohio, it's going to cost you $150 per square foot. And you'll have an energy bill. We built a house for the same price, and we have no energy bill. In fact, we get paid. Now, why is I'll talk about in a moment. Why is that? Now, we had a lot of upscale features. We lumbered our own wood, lumbered the ash trees, because they were going to be taken out by the emerald ash borer. Cost us for our flooring eight to nine dollars per square foot. We could have put in bamboo for five or five fifty. 
quote unquote environmental product. Well, it's grown <laughs> halfway around the world. It's mm -hmm. heavier than all get out. You gotta ship it here, and it's stuck together with all kinds of glues and chemicals and stuff. And Lord knows what it, what probably you have to put in the landfill when you're finished with it. So we went for the beauty of our own ash flooring. We had some old too that we would had to come down. So when you take out all these expensive features. And nothing that has to do with the PV is still in there. All the insulation, all the things that make it a high performance house, they have to be in there, or we have to trade them out for equivalent items with equivalent performance. The cost now comes down to $110 per square foot. That's the cost for a development house, you know, a tract house. But the difference with development houses is they have energy bills. So you can build a tract house that has no energy bills or build one that has energy. What are you going to do? There's no, it doesn't cost anything. Now, how can you do that? You're saying to me, that costs loony. You can read the book that I've written and look at all the assumptions I made, but essentially here's the message. If you take a standard builder that builds standard houses and you tell them, I want these features, they're add-ons. Well, hell, they're going to cost a lot more money because they're add-ons. We started out with a systems approach. What was the first thing? Make the tightest, best envelope you could make. Think about all the systems. So we thought and designed with this end goal. And when you do that and you don't back things into the project or add them on, they don't cost any more. But we don't have many people that know how to do that, your standard build. And you can see this in the bids we had. We had a number of builders, but the builders didn't know what they were doing. Guess what? Their bids were 10 to 15% higher. Because <laughs> they, they were going to add it all. There's two builders that knew how to do it. There was the lowest bids, and they were almost the same. Anyway, so, I don't know, that's going to be hard to believe, right? Go tell your mom and dad that. <laughs> Big decisions. Big decisions are you make it smaller, you make the envelope tight and well insulated, you orient the long axis east west. You should do all buildings, all college buildings should be done this way. And all the other decisions you make are an order of magnitude less in importance in terms of dealing with the big issues of being uh, uh, climate neutral. Not to fit in an older house. I'm going to go through this pretty fast because I've already been too verbose. Our friends the Stoners had a 54 conventional house and they went and made improvements. They put a blower door test to find the air leaks. Howard caulked all the leaks everywhere. Result was a 60% reduction in infiltration. That's the blower door test numbers. And by doing those kinds of things, and then Howard went in, and these are the house improvements. You insulate an attic fan, a roof attic, walls blown in, basement walls insulated. Other put in compact thrust bulbs, power strips, nightbox thermostat, all the simple things you know how to do. Programmable thermostat. Here were the energy savings. Before he did it, his house used 127 million BTUs. That's the record from the past. It's hard, cold fact. I mean, this wasn't made up. He then, after the improvements, his energy bill, energy use went to 57 million BTUs. He dropped down 70 million BTUs by just doing those things I just told you. Decrease of 55%. The payback time was four years. He, it, and that's at the average cost of $2 million per BTU, $20 per million BTUs. Improve, it cost him $5,000 to do it. His payback was really in <clears throat> about four years. So it's like someone coming to you and saying, hey, look, I see you got an extra $5,000. Give it to me, okay? I'm going to guarantee you as long as you live, a 25% return. You have your money made back in four years and after that, it's all great. And you're going to say, Bernie, I don't want to deal with it. You know, made off. And it's, it's a made off deal. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but you go home and tell your mom, Pa, and your own houses, you want to get 25% return, you tell Bennington College. You want to get a 25% return, you do this low-hanging fruit stuff. That brings you halfway down to be climate neutral. And it pays back in four years, and after that, you get all the money to keep. I know, it doesn't sound believable. It's true. 
And there's, this is just a hard, there's other people who've done it.